my beautiful people. Beautiful I here, doing my first little makeup tutorial. Um, well, it's not even a makeup tutorial. It's actually just tips, tricks as far as your hair and skincare go. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about, in all honesty, is product. Um, I can't tell you how often I hear clients come in and complain to me, you know, why would I buy this $35 shampoo or whatever versus the $8 shampoo I can get at Walmart. And in all honesty, <laughs> something people don't know about Walmart or a lot of places where they can just basically go get shampoo and stuff without um, a Cosmo license is that, like, I want you to picture a giant bin as big as, um, I want to say, a football field. <laughs> um, that bin is made and is in a factory, and basically what happens is um, mass production of basically laundry detergent um, is just put in that bin, and it is put into individual bottles with fragrances and stuff and a label slapped on it. Um, and that's your shampoo and conditioner that you use from Walmart. I hate to break it to you guys, but the stuff you're using from Walmart is actually more damaging to your hair um, versus quality salon products. And something else people don't realize is when you use a sol uh, quality salon project, or product, I apologize, <laughs> you use about 10 times less of the product versus the, um, the Walmart product. So in all honesty, the $35 that you spend on the shampoo at your local salon will last you a lot longer than the when you got from Walmart. Um, I personally like to use, I can't even read it, um, it's called Bain de Terre. Um, I love this. It really helps to keep my delicate blue <laughs> in my hair. Um, something I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about. As far as shampooing goes, um, Something that some people don't know, uh, I really want to point out that shampoo is meant for the scalp only. So if you're using it on your ends all the time, you should honestly stop. Um, the shampoo is made to break up the debris and dirt with on the scalp, which is actually where most of, you know, hair oil and stuff is. So that's what it's really made for, to clean the scalp. Um, whereas your conditioner is used to clean the ends. So when you rinse your shampoo, please make sure you rinse it with warm water or something else um, that I've learned is that, um, how to explain this, warm water clo or opens up the hair cuticle, which means it allows for cleaning and basically just strips or strips the hair shaft. So um, when I'm shampooing and using warm water, I'm opening up that hair shaft to allow it to clean. Now when I apply my conditioner, something you want to do before you apply your conditioner is dry your hair. Um, conditioner can't absorb or any product for that matter, can absorb in wet hair. There's, there's no room for it to absorb. <laughs> so when you, before you apply your conditioner, whoops, sorry, knocking over bottles here. <laughs> before you apply your conditioner, make sure you dry your hair, just so that way you get the ultimate benefit of your conditioner. And then always make sure to start at your ends and then work your way up the hair shaft. Um, when you apply too much conditioner on the scalp, it creates um, more oil than you need, and it also can weigh down the hair. Just a little p advice for anybody who's like oily and weighing down. The hair is not or is not meant to be shampooed every day. In fact, the more, uh, I, in fact, I go maybe two days um, before I shampoo my hair. I really don't like to go beyond that personally. Um, so, and the days between, I go ahead and I get in the shower and I'll run warm water all over my hair, and then I go ahead and I dry it out and I use conditioner straight away instead of the shampoo. Just get the shampoo all together and go with conditioner. Something else you can do. If you have really fine hair like I do. Or, and you know what I mean, if your hair tends to break a lot, um, stop using a brush right away when you get out of the shower and your hair is wet. Rather, go ahead and use a pick to detangle your, um, detangle your hair. And then go ahead and wait until your hair is like, I want to say 75 to 80% dry before you use your brush. So that way you're not ripping out as much hair. Something else to note while we're talking about brushes and stuff, always clean your hair brush. Um, a clean brush is a happy brush. It helps to allow the, the movement of the brush. Um, if you have a bunch of hair on there, it just kind of restricts. Like, if you notice, there's a bunch of padding on brushes, so it allows movement of the hair brush as far as the bristles and stuff go over your scalp. So, if you clean your brush, you get a better hair brushing result. Sounds weird, I know, but it actually totally works. <laughs> a good way to apply product is never way to get right out of the shower. A lot of times, I used to remember seeing my mom growing up, she would get out of the shower, tell, tell dry her hair real quick, and then start applying product. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> go ahead and power dry your hair first. Um, I go ahead and, and I like to get the hair 75 again, to 75 to 80 percent dry before I apply any product. And after I do that, I might go ahead and actually power dry it some more um, before I even go ahead and use um, as far a brush.
brush or anything like that. Um, something else to note too, if you are using any form of heat on your hair, always use heat protectant. And don't use the stuff you get at Walmart because that stuff honestly can end up um, drying out your hair more. So if you ever notice uh, if you buy, I've bought a heat protectant from Walmart before. And I was using it so much that my hair actually needed it, even on days when I wasn't using um, any form of heat. So it's actually, in fact, more so drying out my hair. So something you might want to know. Why do cosmetologists and your hairdressers want you to come in for a trim so much? Something you don't know is um, we're not trying to get you to come in all the time just, you know, so you can spend money. We're actually concerned about your hair. Um, even if you're not using heat, or, you know, styling your hair and just letting it go, the sun can damage your hair. The wind can damage your hair. Your daily life just damages your hair. It's just a fact of life. Um, and the general rule is every six to eight weeks, um, the hair is needed for trims, not only to help keep it in shape, but to also help the split ends that inevitably have grown in over the last six to eight weeks. And what exactly is a split end while we're talking about that? Um, a split end is literally um, the hair shaft, like the little piece of hair right here, the hair shaft. This is the hair shaft. Um, at the end, it just literally breaks in, breaks in half. Now, a lot of people think, oh, if I just, you know, ignore it, it'll be fine. Well, that's not true. Um, as your hair grows, the split end moves up the hair shaft. So it literally just kind of creates a ripping effect as your hair grows. So basically, the longer you wait to get a hair trim, the more likely you're going to have to get more cut off when you sit in your stylist chair versus if you would have just gone in within the six to eight week period. While we're talking about that, um, deep conditioning treatments and blow dry styles are always a great way to help promote hair growth because uh, scalp, simu scalp simulation helps. <laughs> All that blood circulation helps to create more hair um, just because it helps the hair follicle and stuff like that. There's a whole scientific -y side into it that I want to get into. Anyways, another thing you can do too is go ahead and ask your stylist if you can take um, a deep conditioner home with you. I personally like to use the Ion Hair Mask. Um, something you want to know with um, any deep conditioners or hair masks or anything you take home with from your salon, always follow the directions on the bottle. Like for example, on this bottle it says leave in one to two mi minutes. For excessively dry or damaged hair, leave in for three to five minutes. Um, only use one to two times per week. So, or often as needed. Personally, I like to only use it one to, time, one to two times per week for the simple fact that the more protein you put in your hair, the more conditioner you put in your hair, it can actually create a reverse effect um, and literally become the hair just, literally make the hair become too soft, so it just breaks. So, something to know, um, protein is good, but too much protein for your hair can be bad. Something else your stylist might not talk to you about are home remedies. So, a few home remedies I like to use are mayonnaise and olive oil treatments. Um, mayonnaise, I go ahead and I literally shampoo my hair, dry it out, get out of the shower, and start, um, sorry, start at the ends and then work my way up the shaft. Um, I really don't like to put too much mayonnaise or olive oil on my scalp because I have fine hair, so the more oil I put on my scalp, the greasier and grosser my hair is going to look, and it's just not right. So, <laughs> I like to start at the ends and work my way up. Um, and I go ahead and I literally put a Walmart bag over it and let it sit for, I want to say an hour to two, and then I go ahead and I rinse it out and probably shampoo it again because it smells like a sandwich now, and then I go ahead and I condition it. Um, another thing I can do too with the olive oil, um, I go ahead and I shampoo it, dry it, um, I actually like to power dry it fairly well. Um, and then I go ahead and I take some olive oil and I put it in a cup and I'll go ahead and throw it on my gray for, eh, I want to say 15, 20 seconds. Just enough to get it lukewarm. I don't want it to be really hot, but I really want it to be warm. Um, warm enough so it penetrates that cuticle and gets into the hair shaft. Um, and then again with the olive oil, I absolutely do not touch my scalp. Just start at the ends and work my way up. If you are using a straightener or a curling iron or anything that requires you to turn on and wait to up, whatever for your hair, there's a general rule um, as far as heat setting goes. So if you have fine hair, the recommended setting is, all, in all honesty, um, 300 to 350 degrees. If you have medium hair, the recommended setting is 350 to 390. And if you have coarse hair, 
um, the recommended setting is 390 and up. Just a little FYI if you ladies are turning up your straighteners too high. Um, I understand it might take a little bit longer to work through, but in all honesty, it's healthier for your hair. And once again, if you're using hot tools, please use heat protectant. <laughs> Enough about hair. Let's talk about skin. Um, washing your face. Always wash your face two times a day, ladies. Um, once in the morning and once before you go to bed. Just so that way all your um, night greasy stuff isn't on your, your clean palette for when you apply your makeup. And so that way when you go to bed at night, you don't have a bunch of makeup all over your face getting into your pores and actually creating more pimples and stuff than really should be. Um, I like to personally just use a Dove Sensitive Skin Bar Soap and a regular washcloth to wash my face. Nothing spectacular. I um I use lukewarm water. I don't want it to be too hot because the face skin is extremely sensitive. So you want to be kind to it. Um, while we're talking about that, something else to know is whenever you're touching an area around your eyes or your mouth, always use these two fingers rather than these three fingers because these two fingers aren't as strong as these three fingers. So it'll be a lot gen more gentle around these extremely delicate areas. And it's especially, you know, important to note if you're ever worried about wrinkles or anything like that, because the kinder you are to your skin from the beginning, um, the, mess, the less prevalent your wrinkles will be as you get older. Sunscreen. Always wear sunscreen whenever you walk out the door, as the sun's burning grays are actually one of the leading causes of wrinkles. So something else, something you can use is um, an 8-in-1, I like to use 8-in-1 foundation. This has everything in it, I do believe. It even has an SPF protectant. Um, if your makeup doesn't have an SPF protectant in it, go ahead and just apply a basic sunscreen to your face before you apply your, your primer. Um, just to keep your skin nice and protected. And else to note, too, if you're worried about wrinkles <laughs> while we're talking about this, um, hydration is very important. Um, um, water helps to replenish collagen, which, by the way, um, after you turn 25, collagen depletes by 1.5% in your body each year. So, um, if you are taking collagen supplements and you are concerned about wrinkles and you are older than 25 or 25 and over, <laughs> you should start taking them. I highly recommend them. Honestly, uh, lately I've been on keratin supplements and my nails have been growing drastically. It's really funny because my pinky nails have been growing faster than anything else, but, you know, um, and my hair's been growing faster. It's really nice. There's a difference between whiteheads and blackheads. Um, whiteheads not only are white, but, in fact, the skin that is covering the actual, like, bacteria, dirty pore, or whatever itself is closed, which means that if you go ahead and just squeeze out a whitehead, you're literally bursting open, up, bursting open skin. Um, and just damaging yourself. If you ever have a white head, go ahead and take a hot rag first and go ahead and put it over the white head and let it draw as much as possible. And I go ahead and take a sterile needle, so I like to go ahead and just take a regular safety pin and take a lighter and heat it up so that way it's nice and sterile. And you just, this is, sounds gross, but you literally poke it directly through it so that way it just kind of, you know, alleviates the pressure on it. You're not destroying your skin. Um, a blackhead is an open pore, which means you can just go ahead and squeeze away, <laughs> so you're not hurting anything. Please always clean your makeup, ladies. Um, there's a few videos that will be down in the link below regarding cleaning your makeup brushes and how dirty your makeup actually is. Um, <laughs> uh, we saw these in class the other day, and I was honestly quite disgusted. Um, basically what they recommend is you literally take an ordinary spray bottle or or you could take um, an old perfume bottle if you have one and fill it with 99% rubbing alcohol and you go ahead and you take your makeup brush oh, it. <laughs> you just spray it like so and by the time that rubbing alcohol air dries it's considered completely sanitary and clean. So the reason why we do this is there are tons of pathogens and bacteria that actually grow on your makeup and stuff between uses, so the cleaner it is, the better. <laughs> That's all I really have for you guys right now. So, without further ado, let's go and do our first makeup tutorial.